All right, guys, and welcome to the Zoom board. And here you have a picture of the Zoom board. It's a PA board, recording board. It's got eight channels of microphones and then four more channels that line in. So it's a 12 channel input board. And as you can see, it's like a regular PA board. You got the faders on the bottom, you got uh, the inputs and you have the outputs that go into the speakers. You're gonna, we're gonna take a look at all the sections, the EQ sections and everything else. So we're gonna go at it slowly, uh, step by step, get you acquainted with it first, and then we'll see what happens, okay? So let's look at the top bar first, and let's see what we got there. As you can see, you got eight mic line inputs, all right? And these are for XLR and for quarter inch. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. The quarter inch is your regular guitar chord, what comes out of your keyboard sometimes, if you're gonna use a keyboard. Uh, and that goes in right there, because that doubles as a line and a microphone. And then you got your microphone cable that comes in, and there you go. So you put that in, and now you have a connection of microphone or line. So you could uh, record guitars, keyboards, what, whatever, whatever you have. And then, as you see, the rest of the inputs are four more line inputs that you can plug in your keyboard or anything else, and you have 9 and 10 and 11 and 12. And then to the right, you have the two outputs that go to your speakers. This is used for when you're doing a PA, uh, when you're going out and playing, uh, you connect the, your powered speaker to those left and right outputs, XLR, and uh, you can get your sound. It's just like a regular PA. You can also use it for monitoring if you want to monitor yourself with speakers, but when you're recording at home, I probably would suggest that you use the headphones. The headphones is better. Um, but it's up to you. You can have those plugged in or not. Okay, so now we got the eight mic and line, uh, which like I showed you, you can plug in a quarter inch guitar cord or a cable from your keyboard, or you can plug in a microphone. And uh, let's move on to the next one, okay? All right, the next section, as you can see here, is gonna be to, to the right of what we were just talking about. And you got the left and right outputs that go to your powered speakers. And right next to that, you have an, uh, one labeled A, and it's a left and right output also, which are quarter inch um, output, which means it's kind of like a guitar cable that you can use to send to uh, whatever you want, or monitors, anything you want. It's another output to speakers or whatever you want. But what we're going to talk about is the section right next to it which is the headphone section. And this board has a pretty neat thing. It's a, um, a headphone output, kind of like a mixer, gives you different mixes to different headphones. So if you have five and you got A, B, C, D, E, if you have five people monitoring, let's say in a band playing and you're, you're recording, each one of those can have, theoretically, a different mix. So if one guy likes to hear the bass really loud, but the other guy hates the bass loud, you can put the bass really loud on the B phones, and you can put the drums uh, really loud on the D phones and the uh, bass softer. So you can make different mixes for each. So you actually have five headphone outputs that you can use and uh, you can either everybody listen to the same thing or you can select which uh, mix to have. And if you look right below it, you see those little knobs. Those are the volumes that control each one of the, uh, of the mixes, each one of the headphones. And there's little buttons there that say master and then the letter. If you, if you look under the one that says B, you see there's a knob. Right under it, there's a little button and you can see the drawing on there. If the button was up, you'd be listening to the master mix. If the button is down, you'd be listening to the B mix, which you can change. And the same thing goes for all five of those. So it's a pretty decent thing to have in this board because uh, you can listen to your master um, 
mix, which would be all the all the instruments that you're recording at the same time, or you can each individual player or person that's listening can listen to their own mix. So that's really interesting, and it's uh, amazing for a board that's this cheap. So let's move on to the next one. All right, and as the next section comes up, you can see this is right below where the eight mic line inputs were, and this is what we're looking at now. We're going to look a little close up. If you notice, there's a sequence of numbers, one, two, three, four, a little red button it says 48V with a little red uh, diode light there and if you notice the one that says five six seven eight that one's pressed and the red light is on what this is is phantom power some microphone condenser microphone specifically need phantom power to run and your regular sure microphone stuff like that will not need this but that fancy microphone that you paid a lot of money for needs to have phantom power so when you plug in your your microphone to any one of those lines, if you want it to work, if you plug it into one through four, the red the red button on the one through four needs to be pressed down. If you plug it in anywhere between five and eight, like the way I have it plugged in, because my microphone is also a condenser, um, you need to press it down and the red light goes on. That's just electricity for the microphone. It's no big deal. You don't need to know anything other than if you want it to work, you need to push it in. All right, right below it, there's some black buttons. Some of them are called high Z, has nothing to do with drugs, and the other ones are called pads, okay? These buttons are interesting. They're used to control the signal of whatever you're connecting going into your board. So the high Z is used to match the impedance of a high impedance cable cord or instrument that goes into your board. So if you're connecting a guitar, bass, uh, sometimes even a keyboard, you might want to try using that to maintain the level uh, as a good level. The pad is reduces whatever you put in. If you have a very loud microphone or a loud instrument is, that's overpowering the, the signal, you put the pad in and it reduces the, the level uh, by 26 dB or something, it doesn't matter. It's, it Just know that you can use it that way, but most of the time, I leave it for what we do. I leave it, I don't even touch it. And then you see the knobs right under it. They, one of them says gain, the other one says comp. Let's talk about the gain. This, these are the knobs that control the signal going into the board. The gain coming into the board from your microphone or your guitar, your bass, your keyboard, whatever it is, it controls it so that it doesn't overload the preamp, which is the amp that controls the signal coming into the board. So the way you use this is when you first plug in your microphone, for example, you plug it in and then you bring the gain up slowly to get the right balance. And how do you know? Well, there's a SIG sign right there with a little little uh, light if that light is green when you're talking or singing or putting a signal in there it, it must stay green if it goes into the red you lower it a little bit until the red disappears and you keep it green that gives you the optimum level going into the recording and going into the preamp uh, so that's something that you need to get to learn is it like a little trick, but uh, you put your microphone on, you sing as loud as you think you're going to sing, you, you look at your, your light there, if it goes into the red, you lower it a little more, if it goes to red, you lower it a little more until it blinks mostly green and it doesn't go into the red. And now you have a good signal for your recording. And that's what the game does. And we'll talk more about that later. The comp button right under is a compressor. And I prefer not to use it because if I'm going to use a compressor, I'll use it um, in after the effects. So uh, I leave it off, as you can see in here. Mine, I leave all of them off. Uh, but you can use it. It's a, it's, it keeps the level at a, at a good level when you're recording. But again, for now, let's leave it off. Let's not talk about that. Okay? So let's move to the next section and see what happens. All right. We're still going down. And we're moving down to where the actual faders are going to be. 
and where you select your microphone. Um, as you see, there are these white little buttons and it's right under the comp knobs that we were looking at. The select button, the SEL, is for each channel all the way to 12 and even, even in the master section. You select when you want to use or make changes to that channel with the EQ effects and things like that, which we're going to look at in a second. Because this board, being a digital board, is very interesting. Like if, you, if you're used to seeing PA boards or recording boards, each channel has a bunch of knobs because each channel has its own EQ, effects send, uh, all kinds of different things that uh, each channel is assigned to. On a digital board, especially a um, low budget digital board, but actually it's a, it's a really good system, all the channels share the effects section, uh, EQ section. So when you hit select on this channel, the EQ and effects section, which is all the way to the right, you can't see it now, but I'll put it on in a minute, uh, becomes active for that channel. And this thing being that it's really a computer, it remembers, it knows when you select channel one, the settings for the um, EQ and effects section actually become activated and it remembers any settings that you put for that channel. So each one of the channels has a select button and as you want to work with the EQ, work with the uh, effects, you select it and you work it. Now let me point something out. The EQ and effects on this board are strictly for monitoring. So you will select it and then put it whatever effects you like, uh, echo, reverb, anything you like on your headphones. Uh, you can EQ yourself a little bit if you got too much bottom, whatever, you can take some off, you can put some highs, but the EQ will not affect what you're recording. The recording will be what is called flat, nothing, it will have nothing, but for monitoring, which helps you because if you're singing and you want to hear yourself with some effect or some nice EQ, you select that channel and you work on the, uh, on the EQ and you can hear it in your monitor, right? So that's what those buttons are for. And I think I'm going to display a little bit of the, uh, of the monitor section uh, so you can see it. And then the buttons right under it, record play. This comes into effect when you're recording, when you have the recorder on, which we'll look at in a minute also. Uh, and you can select, you can, what they call, arm the channel. So you get channel one, hit that button, and when it becomes red, it's ready to record. Uh, once you're recording that channel and you want to listen to it back, you switch it. And if you see channel number eight on this picture, uh, the record play is in green because it's already a track has been recorded and it's green because it's ready to play for you to listen to it back. And so you play around with those. Right under that, you got the mute buttons. What does that mean? When you're playing back later on, if you're trying to mix on the board and you're playing back, there's a channel you don't want to listen to, you click on that and the channel will be muted, which means you won't be able to hear it. And then the faders right under it control what you hear in your monitor. Now it doesn't control what the recording is. The recording is being controlled by the gain button, the first one that we played with that uh, has a little light that goes green and red and tells you what the good level is. This, these buttons here, which are faders, tell you what the, for the mix. So if you want to hear yourself louder or softer in your headphones, you would control it here. You wouldn't touch the gain button. The gain button once once you have the right gain, you leave it and you don't touch it. So then you would uh, play around with these, with the faders, uh, to get your mix. So I'm going to show a little bit of the, um, of the EQ section now, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, let's look at the EQ section. And what we were saying before is that when you press that uh, select button on each one of those channels, uh, any, any one of those 12 channels, you press the select button, the EQ section, which you're seeing right now, becomes active, okay? What does that mean? Well, that means that you have here uh, some buttons, 
And if you look at the channel strip, the blue area, this is the area that gets activated when you press select and also the, the buttons to the right. Uh, you see first there's the EQ off button. So if you don't want EQ, you don't want to hear any EQ in your monitor, you press that and the EQ is out. Right under the EQ button, you have send effect. And with that, you can select how much effect you want to hear on your headphones for that channel and that mix. If you see, it's got like little lights on the knob. Those lights change depending upon which channel you select and how much up or down you have you have selected. Uh, so that's your basically your your effect button, which is the effect send, and it, uh, it gives you the level of how much effects you can hear. Then right under it, you have a pan, so that uh, if you got listening to a stereo image, you can pan it to the right or pan it to the left. That works normal like any other board. And then to the right of that, you've got your EQ, which is your low, your mid, which you actually can select what frequency to affect in the mids, and you got highs. And again, you select whatever you want for your microphone that you've selected, but that's the only microphone that's gonna work for that moment until you change it, and then you can change it to different because everybody can have different EQ. To the right of that, is you have a, a effects section which there, it gives you a bunch of different effects, halls, plates, it gives you different types of, of effects, whether it's um, slap, echo, reverb, all kinds of different things. You select which one you want there, you press the button to select it, and then on the two, bottom two, right under that, you can tweak it for the tone, the time, like if you have a, a slap, pop, 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 you can, select how fast or how slow the, the uh, decay or feedback for that is. So that's the EQ uh, effect section, which becomes active only for each channel when you select the select button on the channel, okay? Let's move on right now. I think we're gonna move on to the recorder section. Okay, and this is what makes this uh, board uh, different than all the other boards and and that it comes with that little section right there which is a really nice recorder believe it or not it's a digital recorder and you record onto an sd card which is a memory card that goes in the back of the board and it you get 128 gigabytes like i have and uh, you can record a bunch of songs on there so um I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here other than you have a recorder built in which will record whatever you're putting through that mixer and you can select what kind of quality, whether you have a very high quality or a lower quality depending upon what you're recording, how important it is what you're trying to record, but you can record very high quality audio uh, coming through here. And the way it works is you select a project uh, you can name the project or you can leave, you see a number up there around top of all those zeros. Uh, that number gives you the date and the, uh, the time that you create the project and it uh, leaves it as a name. You can always go in and change it. It's a pain in the neck, but you can do it. You can put it, the name of your song, whatever you're recording, you can put it on there. And uh, it um, gives you where you are, you can rewind, you can uh, you see the, on the bottom you got a menu, in the menu you can change all the settings. Uh, you also have a metronome that you can get your tempo on it. Uh, and then you have the regular controls where you stop, play, pause, you record, uh, rewind, fast forward, and overdub. Uh, the way this thing works is uh, the initial recording, if you record one track, let's say you're putting a piano track and you press the, the one that's a little circle, that's a record, and you will record your track. But then if you wanna add another piano track or you wanna add a, um, a vocal track, then you have to unselect the track that you recorded, make it play instead of record, and then you arm another track, put it to record, and you press record and overdub. And I'll show you how to do it later. But then now you're going to be adding to that uh, project another track. And you can do that 
You can record simultaneously. You can, you can record up to 12 tracks, or you can add them slowly, uh, and uh, you can keep adding. All that gets stored in the memory card, which then you pass that uh, recording, the digital recording, into whatever medium you want. You can make it a, put it into a program that makes a MP3s, or you can make it into a program that makes a CD ready, um, or you send it to me and I help you. Okay. All right. I hope you like this. This is my first attempt at trying to do a video, uh, kind of like a, a, a tutorial video on the board. And I'm going to work on this, see if I can do it better. Um, I'm doing it because I enjoy it. All right. See you soon.